So in this video, we're rounding up a whole bunch of secrets, Easter eggs, and generally cool details that you probably didn't know about Beyond Light. I've been slowly compiling this list since launch of things that I found super interesting and not many people know about, and I've built it all into this one video. Some of these are huge Easter eggs that are like six years old at this point. Some are more behind the scenes development secrets of how Bungie made the expansion and others are more small random details. But I guarantee no matter how hardcore or casual you are, you're definitely going to learn some things by watching this video. So if you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and click the thumbs up button down below until it turns blue. I would appreciate it. And with that being said, let's jump into the first one. Over on Nessus, you can find an Easter egg which Bungie has put into the game all the way back at launch in 2017. And up until this point, Beyond Light, it didn't really make too much sense. It was a very vague scannable that kind of sounded like it could be something in the future. This dialogue only actually plays if you're on an EXO character. And since Beyond Light, this makes a lot more sense. Ah, I think this conflux reacted to your EXO body and then it burned out. Is there some connection between the EXOs and the VEX? That can't be. I actually do remember listening to this back at launch. I think I might have mentioned it in a video, but obviously at the time it didn't make too much sense. It was just a vague assumption that maybe there was a connection between the Exos and Vex. I mean, they're both robots, but of course how Exos are made has always been one of Destiny's biggest mysteries and secrets that only got uncovered in Beyond Light. Now we know the Exos are actually made using Vex milk, and that's part of the formula. So it's a cool Easter egg just shows that Bungie had clearly got this connection between the Exos and Vex planned long before 2017 and this conflux which had been here for a while was alluding to that. The next thing is an interesting development secret and that is that Europa was initially supposed to be Enceladus which is an icy moon of Saturn. This is something that's been speculated about before but has actually been confirmed by a Bungie artist who shared some early concepts of how Europa came to be. This is some art from Dor J. Belbrook, who you might recognize has made some incredible artwork for Destiny, the whole franchise. A lot of his work shows very epic and dramatic early versions of how things came to be. And he mentions in this post how Enceladus was considered as a location possibility for a time, which is why Saturn is in the background. There are quite a few images where you can see Saturn in the background of this icy moon, which then of course turned into be Europa. But what's even more interesting is how you can also see hive structures, very reminiscent of Scarlet's Keep in the Shadow Keep expansion, these massive hive towers, which definitely implies that it was going to be also a hive expansion. In this image, you can see a close up of this massive hive structure, which almost looks similar to the Dreadnought, but this could be something we're likely to see in Witch Queen, but it's definitely a hive location on this icy moon. Now this piece of concept art actually has been in the game for quite a while. You might recognize it, it's been in there since launch and it shows an early version of what I guess was supposed to be Enceladus with Saturn in the background. But one thing I only recently noticed is that it does show that red ice in the bottom there and you can see that's obviously a staple of what turned out to be Europa and is also in these early concept arts of Enceladus slash Europa. Now the next thing I want to talk about is actually an easter egg that spans all the way back to 2015 The Taken King and this is connected to what I was talking about with Enceladus and Europa and this is through Cade's journal which was a Taken King collector's edition. I actually still have mine and these are some images of it but inside here he was trying to expose the Deepstone Crypt and this icy moon of Enceladus where it was supposed to be located and it includes this detailed map of the area and this map actually turned out to be what is currently Europa. It's the exact same location. So the entire Europa patrol space which we currently have has been inside this book since 2015 The Taken King back before we knew any of this existed and again this was Cade trying to detail the Deepstone Crypt. A few years later in Forsaken he of course also left some secret messages trying to describe and expose the crypt saying it's on Enceladus in a secret message which is very famous but it does seem like at some point Bungie changed it and this eventually became Europa which of course we saw in the concept art. If I was to offer my best guess, we do know that Europa was supposed to be a Destiny 3 location, but when that game got cancelled, they shifted the content into Destiny 2, and they most likely merged that with what they had been working on for Enceladus for this expansion, whatever it was going to be. But it is pretty interesting how Cade did show us the entire map of Europa all the way nearly six years ago in The Taken King. So next up, you probably remember a pretty iconic part of the Salvation's Grip exotic questline where the ghost does an impression of the Drifter's entire dialogue and all of his lines are done by the ghost in a pretty funny impersonation. Not to dwell on this, but my Drifter impression was pretty good, huh? Listen. Hi, Ring of Sword. See? So in game this came across as pretty funny and light hearted but there was actually a deliberate reason behind this and that's because during the pandemic they couldn't actually schedule the drifters voice actor so instead one of the writers came up with the idea of getting Nolan North who voices the ghost line to do an impersonation of him instead. 
What's funny is the first time he tried it, he actually did the impression of the Drifter too well, and he actually made it sound very similar. So they asked him to do it again, but make it deliberately sound like a worse impression. So that's the real reason why the Ghost does an impersonation of the Drifter in the mission. So next up, we have an Easter egg which stretches all the way back to 2013, nearly eight years ago. And this is a very interesting callback during the Hawkmoon exotic quest mission. This is something Bungie put in as definitely a nod to the very, very old school players who were watching early Destiny trailers. But during the mission, you have to go to several locations and collect these feathers. But the third one is actually a very specific callback to the very first time the Aldrin slash Crow character was ever shown off. Back in June 2013, Bungie revealed this trailer, which was the very early version of Destiny's story, which of course then got rebooted. But in this early version, which we never got to see, the character who was actually called Crow at the time was pointing a gun at the Guardian, and this is set inside the Cosmodrome in this very room. Only a few months after this trailer came out in 2013, Bungie then rebooted the entire story and changed a lot of details, a lot of characters, and this character, who was supposed to be similar to Cade, then became Prince Aldrin, the Queen's brother. Fast forward to Forsaken, and funnily enough, Aldrin ends up killing Cade, and then we kill Aldrin, then the Traveler resurrected him, and now he is the character known as the Crow. So it's a very funny callback. In the description dialogue, which is supposed to be him dreaming, he says that I can see myself, but it's not me. I don't think it ever was, and I'm saying words I've never said, and the Guardian is there. So the Feather being in this location is a callback to the very first time his character was ever revealed as a different version of himself. So it's a very clever callback for the OG Destiny fans. Next up, the elusive exotic raid rocket launcher, the Eyes of Tomorrow, is actually based off of the Destiny 1 version of the Wardcliffe coil that appeared during the Taken King expansion. Some of you Destiny 1 players might recognize this weapon was actually inside the game files in the Taken King, but never actually made an appearance in the game, and of course it was cut and saved for Destiny 2 to be a launch exotic. Not much was actually known about the weapon, but we did know its two perks, and these were a dubious ordnance. This weapon delivers a high energy volley of explosive ordnance and dubious munitions. Kills from the volley add another round to the volley, and that might sound very familiar. These actually became what is now the Eyes of Tomorrow's exotic perks. So the coil ended up getting the perks Mad Scientist, which fires a volley of rockets and mechanized autoloader, which makes you reload the weapon when you pick up ammo. But notably, it didn't have that dubious munitions perk where kills from the volley add another round to the volley. But now it seems the Eyes of Tomorrow actually ended up getting that perk. It's a very similar weapon where it fires multiple tracking rockets, but we have the Adaptive Ordnance perk, which is a similar name, where killing four or more combatants with a single volley increases the damage of the next volley. So a pretty interesting detail how this perk that never made it onto the final version of the Wardcliffe coil ended up being put onto a similar weapon which is the Eyes of Tomorrow. A very random fact is that Atrax, the infamous Deepstone Crypt raid boss, actually had a different name early on in development and that was actually Replix. The only reason I know this is because I actually downloaded a bunch of concept art for a different video and inside the images they're actually all labelled Replix. So you can see Roderick Wise which is the artist, Replix Blue, Replix Turnaround, Replix White. So you can see Replix was actually the early name of Atrax. This name does actually make a lot of sense because of course during the raid she does replicate herself a lot. It's her main thing to make copies and duplicates of herself so Replix is a very fallen sounding name which is pretty appropriate for this character. Since the launch of Beyond Light, there are several terminals on the moon which can be seen now displaying this big Venus logo with a couple of words which are very interesting and most likely referencing the future Vault of Glass being added to Destiny 2. These appear in several locations such as the K1 Communications Lost Sector and also the Lunar Battlegrounds area. And to make sense of these words, we're going to do a bit of a Venus geography lesson. So the first word is Aphrodite Terra, which is actually the biggest continent on Venus in real life. It's about the size of Africa, and Aphrodite is also the Roman goddess of Venus. And there's also a statue from Destiny 1 in the Ishtar Sink you might recognize. The other main continent on Venus is called Ishtar Terra, and that's about the size of Australia. And inside there is the Maxwell Montes, which is the next word on the screen, and that is the tallest mountain range on Venus. Another location inside the Ishtar Terra continent is, of course, the Ishtar Sink, which was the main Destiny 1 area of Venus we used to have. And the final word on the screen is Ishtar Cliffs, which is the location where the Vault of Glass entrance was. And that, of course, being added into Destiny 2, there's some kind of correlation here. So a pretty cool detail that Bungie added since Beyond Light and is definitely some kind of reference to Venus and areas we might visit in the future. So next up is a pretty small detail that Bungie have changed since Beyond Light and that's to do with patrol missions. I think most Destiny 2 players that have been playing since launch have basically become ingrained to just avoid them at all costs because they tend to be more hassle than they're actually worth. 
but now they're actually a lot quicker to launch. They launch pretty much instantly now. And they're also no longer region locked. They used to always be specific to the area that you pick them up in, but now you can grab patrol and literally fast travel anywhere you want they're no longer region specific and you can go to a lost sector for example and you complete it much faster than you used to be able to they also reward a bit more loot and they have easier objectives that are more broad and less specific so overall they're trying to make them a lot more approachable and accessible but if you're a destiny 2 player you might be used to just avoiding them but they are definitely a lot more worthwhile these days there's a pretty cool little detail that Bungie added into the Xenophage Exotic, and this is on the ornament that came in the recent Dawning. Of course, the whole thing is very Christmas Dawning themed, but you might not actually notice that Omar, the tiny bug that powers the weapon, also has a tiny little Christmas hat on inside the little amber. It's something that's very, very hard to spot, and you can pretty much only see it when you open the weapon to reload it. But it's interesting that some Bungie designer took the effort to deliberately put a tiny little Christmas hat on Omar, who of course is the bug inside the weapon. If you don't know the backstory of this gun, Omar was actually one of Eris's fire team members that got killed by the hive and long story short, they turned him into a bug. So he's actually living inside the bug and then we rescued him and turned him into this gun by his own request. So he's actually powering this weapon. He's still living in there now. And if you have the ornament applied, he also has a Christmas hat. Next up is something super random, but something I've always done in Beyond Light, but you don't actually have to go into the building to speak to Varix. You can simply walk up to the window and crouch and you can interact with his full inventory. This will save you precious seconds and you don't have to go all the way through the door. Just simply go up to the window, make sure you're crouched and you can talk to him just as normal. And then you can speed off and do the rest of your business on Europa. Since Beyond Light, Bungie added something very strange to the last Wish raid, and this wasn't here before and has only recently been an addition, but take a listen and you might recognize this sound. So that was actually the sound of an oracle. If you didn't know, those are first introduced in the Vault of Glass, and it's most likely some kind of reference to the Vault of Glass. There could be an involvement here, but you can't actually see the oracle. We don't know where it is. It's most likely just hidden in some kind of wall, but the sound does distinctively play every time you approach this location. Over on the Cosmodrome, in the very initial area where the ghost first revives the Guardian, if you turn around and look into the distance, you'll see a kind of city in the very, very far backdrop. But just in front of those, if you look through a sniper scope, you'll notice some very strange objects, and those are actually pyramid statues. So there's two of them floating off in the distance, and we don't really know why, and they're also glowing. They've got a very strange animation over them. The two most likely reasons would be because there's some kind of mission that takes place here, and these are assets which are going to be loaded in at some point when we go to wherever this is going to be, or it could be some leftover assets that a Bungie designer just left there. It does happen often that very far out inside the map, there are just random assets floating that people forget about, but there aren't any statues or pyramids anywhere on the Cosmodrome. So it is a little strange they are here and could be some kind of leftover assets that do feature in a future mission. One of the most famous Easter eggs in Destiny history, which was on the Destiny 1 Cosmodrome, was also brought into the Destiny 2 Cosmodrome, and this can be found inside the famous Loot Cave. If you don't know, back in 2014, this was basically the original farming spot that we found was basically an efficient way to shoot a bunch of mobs coming out of cave that infinitely spawned and you can get a bunch of blues and loot that wouldn't really be that important these days. But back then, any engrams were very valuable. So this was a famous farming spot that everyone abused until it got patched. And when they did, they added this pile of dead hive, which is an Easter egg and a kind of a nod to one of the most famous events in Destiny history. So it's cool to see that Bungie did carry it over into the Destiny 2 version of the Cosmodrome. There is a very small detail that Bungie did change between the Destiny 1 and 2 versions of the Cosmodrome and that is the crashed ship which was on the Destiny 1 version that you might have noticed in Destiny 2 isn't there anymore. In the second mission of the Destiny 1 campaign you actually go to the ship to collect something from it and it's interesting that in Destiny 2 they have removed the ship so it's since then been recovered or taken away from the area and kind of shows how the world is ever evolving and it's been cleaned up. So there you have it, a ton of Beyond Light secrets. I did spend a while putting this video together, so hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, then I would appreciate if you took a second to like the video, it helps me out a bunch, and consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos from me. On screen now is another video you can check out, but as always, I massively appreciate you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.